Hi, I'm Niklas from Bitsquid and in this tutorial I'm going to show something that we call Flow which is our visual scripting tool. So that's a tool for adding behavior and uh, simple reactions to a level or to a unit uh, but a tool that's aimed at uh, graphical artists and level designers rather than programmers and that allows them to uh, really configure uh, their levels in dynamic ways. So here I have a very simple level um, uh, from the game Hamilton. It's just a basic platform and some spawn points for Hamilton and his bird. Uh, I can look at the flow script for this level by selecting level flow from the window menu. And here we see that it's very simple. It's just contained three things. Now flow, uh, flow as a language is built on nodes. So every node that you see here represents either an event that happens or an action that should be performed. So here we see that we have a level loaded node that represents the event that the level has been loaded. And when this happens, this level loaded node will trigger this out connector. As you can see, the out connector has been connected to two different spawn nodes. Uh, one for spawning Sasha, which is Hamilton's bird and one for spawning Hamilton himself. So when this level has been loaded, these two characters will be spawned. Uh, let's try that out. I'll go back into the level editor. I'll press F5 to test run the level. And as you can see, Hamilton and the bird are both spawned in this level. Uh, let's go back to the editor. So let's try to add some flow nodes of our own. I'll go back into the level flow. Uh, to bring that up and let's create something new here. Zoom out a bit, you zoom using the mouse wheel scrolling up and down and to create a new node you just right click and select the node that you want to create from the context menu. So I'll create a new level loaded node, something to happen when the level has been loaded and to select what happened I'll use another spawn unit node so I'll spawn a unit on a position. Zoom in a bit so we can see better. And I've created a special unit just for this. Uh, it's called a Physics Boulder. And as you can see, I can edit this unit by... I can select what unit I want to spawn by clicking this Edit button for this field. And then I get up this uh, content browser where I can select the unit. Uh, from our list of units and to get this to happen I connect the out node here to the spawn node so when the level has been loaded I trigger the spawning of this unit uh, I can also set a position and a rotation for this unit so I can click on the edit button again to key in a position let's say 5 meters off the ground as you see this position node has both an edit button and a connector. So I can either type in a position or I can connect the position from some other node. So if I wanted to, I could create a node here, for example, a vector3 data node that just holds some position value. I could set that to a value, say four meters above the ground, and connect that to the position value here. And now the position value will be fetched from this node. Of course, you could have more complex behavior here. You could fetch the position from the position of some other object and feed that into the position, uh, into the spawn position. But now let's let's try this out. I'll close this, go back to the level editor, press F5 to test the game. And as you see, this node gets spawned when the this object gets spawned when the level is loaded. Um, so let's try to add a little bit more behavior. I'll go back into the level flow and uh, let's add a, a physics push. So I'll give this I'll give this uh, unit that was recently spawned a bit of a push uh, to see how it moves. So I'll bring in a physics node, physics push. Uh, the way a push works is that we 
feed in a particular unit. That's the unit that we want to give a push. So I'll connect that to this uh, spawn spawn boulder, and then I enter the velocity, which is the velocity that I want to push the unit with. I'll push it straight up with 10 meters per second. All the units here are SI units. All the units throughout the bit squid engines are always SI units. Uh, I'll give a mass that I want to push this unit with. Uh, so let's push, push it with 100 kilograms. And this means the unit will be behave as if it was hit by something traveling at this speed, 10 meters per second, and having this mass. Uh, so when do I want to put, push it? Uh, let's set up a connector from level loaded uh, so that I push it. Uh, but I don't want to push it immediately when the level is loaded. I want to spawn it and wait a little while and then push it. And I can do that by inserting a node here uh, by right clicking on this connection and choosing insert node. And then I can pick a logic delay node and set a time for that to say three seconds. Uh, now what will happen is when the level is loaded, this is triggered, it triggers the delay node, the delay node waits for three seconds and then triggers the push node. So what we should see is uh, this unit should first be spawned, then three seconds later it should get this push. So let's have a look. And I'll press F5, try it out, see it comes down, and three seconds later we get this physics push. So let's try something else. I'll add a trigger to this level. Now a trigger is a physics shape uh, that can be that can produce events when something interacts with it. So this is a trigger. Uh, uh, by the default, the triggers have been set up to react when Hamilton walks into them. So I can set up an event. Uh, now I want to bring this trigger into flow. I can do that by right-clicking on it and choose Create Trigger Flow Node. And as you can see, I get a flow node that represents this particular trigger in the level. And as you see, this node has a bunch of out connectors. Uh, I can get the unit that touched it, that will be Hamilton, and I can get an event for when this trigger has been touched. So I'll I'll remove this, uh, I'll delete this connection from level loaded, and instead set it up so that whenever this trigger is touched, I will give a push to this spawned unit. So let's try that out. Uh, I'll go back into the uh, level editor, press F5 to test the level. There we have the spawn. I walk with Hamilton. And as I walk into the trigger, you see that we get this push every time I enter the trigger. So that shows uh, some basic some basic uh, flow behavior and in a future tutorial I'll try to give a little more in-depth information on how to how you can use flow together with Lua scripts. Thank you.